Tesla's 4680 battery ramp has been slower than Tesla would have hoped um, due to, as Elon Musk recently put it, dozens of little issues that inhibit the production ramp of the 4680, one of which he identified as being related to their revolutionary dry electrode manufacturing process. In this video, I want to further explore this dry battery electrode manufacturing process and also provide some insights from one of my viewers who reached out to me via email and they, um, they said that they work in the battery industry and they graciously agreed to answer a few of my questions. And one of the questions that I sent back to them had to do with why it's difficult to manufacture batteries using a dry battery electrode manufacturing process. So without further ado, let's dive into some of these insights and also talk about the dry battery electrode manufacturing process itself. I'm John and welcome to Cleaner Watt. It's been almost two years since Tesla revealed their new 4680 battery tech. And while 4680 batteries are in production and are in a production vehicle, the standard range all wheel drive Model Y, the ramp up of manufacturing these 4680 batteries, of course, has been slower than Tesla would have hoped. Elon Musk did give a bit of insight into what is holding up mass production of these batteries in the recent Q2 2022 investors conference call. During that call in relation to 4680 batteries, he mentioned, quote, our focus right now is on the dozens of little issues that inhibit the production ramp of the 4680. Elon Musk added, some of the more challenging ones have been feeding the anode cathode material because we're using this revolutionary dry electrode process. If you've been following Tesla over the last several years, then you likely know that they acquired this dry battery electrode manufacturing technology with their Maxwell Technologies acquisition in 2019. To further explore and understand really uh, what this dry battery electrode process even looks like, I did find a white paper, a Maxwell Technologies white paper um, entitled Dry Electrode Coating Technology. And based on what I could gather from this white paper, it appears like this dry battery electrode uh, manufacturing process is really comprised of three big steps. The first step in this process involves uh, mixing the anode and mixing the cathode powders with a polymer binder. Then these anode and cathode powders that now have this polymer binder are processed to create what Maxwell Technologies described in this white paper as, quote, a roll of freestanding dry coated electrode film. Next, this electrode film is laminated onto thin current collector foil, which is generally an aluminum foil for the anode and a copper foil for the cathode. Now that's a very simplistic and basic description of this process. I understand that it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the basic processes that go into manufacturing these dry battery electrodes. And when you just break it down to these simple steps, it sounds like it shouldn't be that difficult. However, mass production of anything is always more difficult than it may seem. So just what makes dry battery electrode manufacturing so difficult? This is of course one of the main questions that I asked the viewer who reached out to me um, and answered my questions. And uh, here's how they responded. Wet processing with a solvent allows the binder, which acts like a glue, to lay around all the particles and bind them together properly just by mixing them. So as they described with a wet process, it's the solvent that helps bind the particles together. And once again, here's a graphic that Tesla shared at Battery Day, which does help visually represent what this wet electrode manufacturing traditionally looks like. So that's how they described the wet process, which involves a solvent, but here's how they described the dry process. Imagine having a liquid glue and letting it dry. Then make a fine powder of the dried glue. Then take that powder of the glue and try to glue two pieces of paper together with it. It will not work. I think that illustration of drying glue, turning it into a powder, and then attempting to stick two pieces of paper together with that powdered glue, I think that's a really good illustration um, that helped me understand this process quite a bit. And they went on to describe three different things, three different processes that are necessary to make this dry powder actually work on the electrode metallic film. First, they mentioned that dry coating requires high temperatures to somehow get the binder more flexible. We know from that Maxwell Technologies white paper that I mentioned earlier 
that the binder that they use for this powder is a polymer binder. So apparently high temperatures are needed uh, to allow the polymer binder to activate and turn this powder into a thin film. I'm definitely going to be doing more research to find out how the heat is applied and how much heat is necessary for this process to work, so do stay tuned for a future video, and if you have insight on this, feel free to reach out to me. They then went on to describe how this polymer binder has to be fibrilized um, to allow it to wrap around these cathode and anode powder particles. The term fibrilized was not a term I was familiar with, so I looked it up, and basically it means to turn these polymer binders into uh, thin hair-like fibers. The next step they mentioned was then high pressure is needed to make binder and particles bind together. So apparently these processes allow you to turn a powder into a standalone electrode film, which then needs to be laminated to the thin metallic uh, foil that makes up the current collectors of these batteries. I assume that high heat and pressure are also needed to laminate this standalone electrode film to the foil uh, current collector sheets. So as you can see, even with this simplified description of the process, uh, there's a lot more involved than just mixing powders and then making a, an electrode film. There's of course a lot that has to go right for that process to work flawlessly. Maxwell Technologies process has apparently worked on a smaller scale, but when it comes to scaling this up for a large format battery and at mass production volumes, apparently Tesla is having to tweak this quite a bit. In July of last year, Elon Musk talked about this a bit when he said on Twitter, quote, it has required an immense amount of engineering to take Maxwell's proof of concept to high quality volume production and we're still not quite done. In the end, this dry battery electro manufacturing process is worth all the effort and all the fuss because once again, going to a graphic that Tesla shared at Battery Day, if you remember, the wet electro manufacturing process had quite a few steps, but when it comes to the dry electro manufacturing process, it involves just a few basic steps and it takes away a lot of the middle steps and a lot of the floor space traditionally needed to manufacture batteries. In the end, the viewer who works in the battery industry, um, they mentioned in their response that they are confident that Tesla will figure this all out. And they also mentioned that dry battery electrode is a process that works. This is definitely a process that I'd like to dive into further. And I'm trying to find someone who'd be willing to jump on a video call with me, someone who's knowledgeable um, about manufacturing either supercapacitors or batteries with a dry battery electro manufacturing process. So do let me know in the comment section below if you'd be interested in hearing more about this process and maybe even a further deep dive. And also if you're someone watching this video who has knowledge on this topic and you'd be willing to jump on a video call with me, uh, feel free to send an email to me at john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com and uh, just let me know if you'd be willing to jump on a video call with me that we could share with the rest of my audience. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.